Greetings and salutations everyone, I'm Terran Reviews. Now I know it has been quite some time since we last communicated, though you may have forgotten about me, fear not if I haven't forgotten about you. As of late, current circumstances seem dire and the general situation that has been developing during these last 10 months appears bleak at best. I hope that everyone is doing well, and if you're not, then I hope good fortune finds you, wherever you are. The outlook of the future doesn't bode well, and shows little promise of improving anytime soon. Long nightmare is far from over, so I suggest we start preparing ourselves. And what better way to prepare ourselves for the dystopian future that awaits, than to immerse ourselves with a cyberpunk video game. A cyberpunk game that takes place in 2027, and is part of a series of games that I hold in high regard. That series is Deus Ex. During my downtime a recent steam sale caught my attention. I had most of the steam games but to my surprise I had all but one of them. Sensing an opportunity I purchased this Deus Ex game. That game is aptly named Deus Ex The Fall. I'm pleased I could prove you wrong. <laughs> Many of you are probably thinking, why play this game? My response? Well, it was morbid curiosity. Was it a good idea? No, but I said fuck it and I did it anyway. Considering this game was on sale for a couple of bong bucks not too long ago, I decided to finally take a look. This was the only Deus Ex game I had yet to play, and I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I knew I was in for some troubles during my time with this game, but I didn't expect this. The game gets stuck at this downloading screen. Simple fix, just disconnect your internet connection and load it again. I have no idea what these assets may be, but they obviously weren't that important if the game can run without them. I now have full access to your systems. Let's address the whale in the room. The game is a smartphone port was clearly a blatant cash grab. The mobile version had microtransactions, as you'd expect from Square Enix. They claimed they wanted to open up the IP to more people and bring a console game experience to the mobile platform. Well, for one thing, you're trying to appeal to an elusive market that typically has short attention spans, meaning they move on to the next fad as soon as they get bored. And two, Deus Ex was initially a PC game. However, these days it's multi-platform, so Square Enix is probably referring to the control scheme. Also, it's kind of hard to appeal to phone gamers when the game isn't on any of the app stores anymore, which defeats the intent purpose. The responses given in this MCV article appear to be typical marketing responses. I mean, if Mankind divides its pre-order fiasco and microtransaction model or anything to go by, then it's no surprise that the shoot fits. Shout out to the galaxy brains at Square Enix. As far as the port goes, they didn't do much with the interface. You got to assign selection slots for items of different categories, so the interface never really changed to accommodate the PC. Okay, not much of a big deal, but I wonder why they couldn't just use the selection bar from Human Revolution. And sometimes the mouse isn't very responsive in menus either. I thought for a second that my mouse took a trip to the retirement home. <coughs> The tutorial is possibly one of the worst I've witnessed in a long time. It basically insults the average player's intelligence. It comes complete with NPCs blocking your path, invisible walls that don't let you progress, locking you in place, forcing you to buy certain items, and unlock certain augmentations to progress. Even the tutorial lady sounds dead inside. You can move in any direction by using the W, A, S, and D keys. You can hold the shift key to- Hey, me too. At least we have something in common. Even the save system has been ported over. There's no load menu, meaning you can't select specific files or make multiple saves. You know what this means, right? You can potentially fuck yourself over, which is exactly what I did. Just watch, I accidentally quick saved right as an enemy spotted me, which meant that I'd failed a side quest that required me not to be seen. Now you've got to go back and restart the game from the very beginning. Normal saves, quick saves, and auto saves all use the same slot. They're all one and the same. 
Now with that out of the way, we can get on to the gameplay. As you'd expect from a mobile port, there's no ADS, no sprinting, or jumping. Also, you can't hide bodies, which screws with the stealth gameplay a bit, especially if you need to give a guy a cerebral concussion. The bodies stay around for a bit before pulling a disappearing act. The game is in a playable state apart from what I just mentioned a second ago. It works. Much like the previous Deus Ex games, you can augment yourself with various abilities. And much like Human Revolution, the augmentations are more or less the same, even right down to Adam's shades. There's a new stealth dash og which shows up again in Mankind Divided, and this time some active orgs are passive, and you always have access to the Icarus landing system, meaning you'll never die from falling. Before we move on, you can also vault over cover, which is a welcomed addition that HR was sorely lacking. History time. If my ancient history is correct, Icarus's wings melted and he fell fatally into the sea, according to Greek myth. So this naming choice is a bit odd, so I guess we better stay away from the sun, just in case. Takedowns are back, and most of them, if not all, are just the same animations from HR. There are some slight variations with the breaching animation, but that's all. Hacking has been slightly changed. You can't just fortify nodes from the get-go. You need the first level AUG for that. The inventory system is gone, there are no stores or vendors, you just teleport stuff into your quantum pockets with credits. Oh, you can't sell items. This breaks one of the core pillars of DE's design philosophy and world building, making the world feel less alive and believable. There are a few variants of certain weapons. Honestly, it's just like Mass Effect 1. They're just reskins with different stats, though they did remove all the microtransactions from the PC version. You can clearly see what they were trying to do. Speaking of world building, the environments carry on HR's tradition of being detailed in a lot of areas with a lot of clutter, providing you with a decent level of immersion. All things considered, it's not a bad job for a port, and the new environments do make use of unique assets. However, series veterans will no doubt recognise some of the reused assets and soundtracks. To summarise, I'm pleased. Of course, the game does look dated, but I've never been one to care about fidelity. Alternate paths are present to an extent, but some of them are painfully redundant, especially in the beginning. Some restricted areas aren't clearly defined, and enemies will instantly start shooting on sight in some instances. The minimap further compounds this by having potential enemies shown as green, which implies they're friendly. There's also a small part where you're forced to either run past police or fight them. You're not given much breathing room here. No doubt this is going to piss off some of the No Traces stealth players. Story. Skip to the time code on screen if you give a shit. The story puts you in the shoes of not Adam Jensen, a merc who has been recruited by the Illuminati's hit squad. The same guys who shot up Seraph HQ in HR. <laughs> Predictably, you go rogue and go into hiding. Another rogue individual, Anna Kelso, teams up with Ben. Together, they set out to start unraveling the global conspiracy, which brings them to discover that the PMC known as Belta is pushing an untested alternative to neuropathy for organized crime groups. We're meant to be in hiding, and this guy is decked out ready for war and sticks out like a sore thumb. In this game, you're not Adam, so that means you need neuropathy, which would have been an interesting aspect that they could have had the player deal with. This only comes up once and is never really taken advantage of again. For the uninitiated, neuropathine is a drug that augmented people need to stop neuroprosthesis rejection syndrome, where the body rejects the ox and leads to tissue buildup in the brain. This can lead to dizziness, migraines, loss of control over augmentations, painful seizures, and even death. All in all, an average day for your typical gopnik. And that's as far as the story goes, due to the episodic nature of the game, but the game never got a continuation, so we'll never get to play out what was going to happen. Unused story summaries and mission descriptions left in the game's files describe what was likely intended to happen. Basically, it boils down to Ben helping to uncover evidence of a big pharma company, First Life, being directly involved in the conspiracy, and you have to save Anna as she's taken hostage. This probably got adapted into a novel or something, as is the case with unfinished visual media. I don't know. Character like Janus and Alex Vega. Wait, same Alex? What? Okay, I guess she got the Michael Jackson treatment. Whatever. These story elements got repurposed for Mankind Divided. Audio logs make an appearance in this game. Though limited in their use, they're a welcomed addition. They diversify the forms of information you come across in the game, although you can't store them like emails, so you can't listen to them later. You need to awkwardly stand nearby to listen. It really takes you out of the moment. Room 
or something? Right. So, Agent Ryan, Matt, he wasn't just another field agent. Not to me. He was... The tyrants gunned him down at Logan Circle. I lost him. I guess that's part of the reason I asked Ben to stay with me. I can't lose him like I lost Matt. Some of the voice acting is a bit iffy. For example, why are Russians speaking English? They're in Moscow. This doesn't fit the world and atmosphere at all. As a great man once said, there's many words to describe the average Russian, and bilinguals is not one of them. Hey guys, remember Gunther? Remember Skullgun? XD? Remember Dare Sex? Ugh, oh, probably not a good idea to remind me that I'd be better off replaying a superior installment in this franchise. There's this turntable feature that shows you some of the various models of NPCs in-game. You unlock them through finding collectibles. I've never really been interested in things like that, so I have no desire to go on a virtual easter egg hunt to be honest. Oh, and it comes equipped with some ear rape. The devs actually had some original tracks created just for this game, and some of them are actually good. They do a good job of capturing the same tone of HR, and the ambience is on point. That's always a good thing that I've come to expect from the Eidos Deus Ex games. Unfortunately, they did reuse tracks from HR, and there are times where it's painfully obvious. You'll start hearing a Henshaw theme, and it's clearly out of place for a Central American locale. Due to the style of the OST being so similar to HR, some of the new tracks are hard to spot. My mind ended up blowing everything together after a while, which usually happens when multiple games have OSTs with common tonal direction. I was wondering how long they had to port the game to the PC and the year. They had some time, but the release timeline tells me that they probably didn't have multiple teams working on different ports at the same time. So if you count the difference between the Android port and the PC one, then yeah, it's no surprise that people were reporting a lot of bugs back in 2014. Just pure speculation on my part. I'd never heard of Enfusion Interactive, so I went digging. Their recent project page shows a bunch of games I've never heard of, and they're mainly for mobile platforms and the Wii. Such classics as Buck Fever, The Three Little Pigs, Deepak Chopra's Leela, truly, Pieces of art that would make the likes of Da Vinci, Donatello, and Masaccio jealous. Hey, Frontline's Fuel of War. Also, real talk. The Fall was their most recent game. Hopefully, things at N Fusion are going well. I wish them all the best. Final verdict. Would I recommend this game? No, not really. The game doesn't really offer anything new, and you get a listened experience, which Human Revolution does a better job of offering. And you know, the story is actually complete there. If you're a diehard Deus Ex fan, then I'd recommend waiting for a sale. Or you could just read Deus Ex Hardline to find out what happens. It looks like we're at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Remember, in these dark times, try to stay safe out there. It's not the end of the world, but you can see it from here. Take care.